great, great theatre to play this, you know. And it's uh, London's lucky, isn't it? Because it's got you know so many theatres of this quality. And as you go around the country, they're like knocking a lot of theatres down, you know. And uh, shame because like all the, all these Muppet boxes here, and, uh, <laughs> oh, lovely things, and uh, they. they, they they're replacing all these theatres with, like, you know, community centres and, uh, and, and big sports complex. And you have to do concerts in sports halls. You have to do these massive, great aircraft anger things, you know, and you're, you're doing a concert and people are clay pigeon shooting and uh, <laughs> they forget to cancel the badminton courts. And it's just too bad people play badminton in the audience. You know, well, I'm a bloody member, I'll play badminton. <laughs> Weird, the places you have to play. And I once played Scunthorpe Baths. Impressed? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's strange how you get to venues, isn't it? Because uh, I, I played... I, I'll always remember Scunthorpe Baths, because it's... Um, it was a while ago. I'll explain, because um, it's a, a bit embarrassing, but bear with me. Uh, a lot of people are surprised... Uh, when I, I tell them that a while ago, uh, I actually had a hit single. Huh? And uh, it was a thing, so you've forgotten, and it, uh, a funky moped uh, was the actual uh, A-side of this single, which is an abysmal song. Uh, but it actually sold on the B-side, right? And this, this was a thing called Magic Roundabout, which uh, was... You've heard of that? No, 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 no. Hey. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> I feel like Andy Williams. Oh, hi, though. <laughs> no, um, well, if you know it, uh, uh, Magic Roundabout, of course, was uh, banned by the BBC, which is like the best thing that could ever happen to it, didn't it? I mean, <laughs> BBC ban a single, everybody rushes out to buy it, see why it's banned. And like, hey, why is it banned? Because hey, it's crap. Oh. <laughs> um, and Scunthorpe is... Um, an interesting place, very nice place, uh, but I believe there's not a great deal for young kids to do. And what the council uh, of Scunthorpe used to do, every, every Saturday night they used to open up the baths for dancing. Right? And they used to cover it over first, obviously. <laughs> Reggae in the seven foot never caught on. <laughs> And they used to, uh, <laughs> they used to book these groups like Kenny and Slick and the Bay City Rollers, all that heavy stuff, you know. And, and uh, they're obviously running out of groups and they're looking for new ones to book in. So they must have been reading Melody Maker or something and they're looking down the, the chart lists in there and they see Funky Moped, Jasper Carrot. So, so they found this manager of mine and they said, um, Do Jasper Carrot want to play Scunthorpe Bats? <laughs> And the manager's not daft. He said, um, they might. <laughs> How much? He said, well, we don't pay any more than 300 quid. So he phoned me. He said, hey, Carrot, do you want to play Scunthorpe Bats for 300 quid? <laughs> I'll drink Scunthorpe Bats for 300 quid. Stupid question, you know. Like, yeah, gimme, 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 gimme. And uh, he doesn't tell me about the group bit, you know. So, like, this Saturday night, about four weeks later, I bowl off to Scunthorpe Bats. Manager comes along for the laugh, obviously. <laughs> Get to Scunthorpe Bats. 1,700 kids packed into Scunthorpe Bats, right? And, and I'm underneath, because that's where the dressing room is. And it's, a, it's the whole basement of the Bats. It's an immense dressing room. You get your own boiler and... <laughs> the only trouble is it's only four foot six high. You know when you walk. <laughs> and the manager of the bats is six foot six. You know? I mean, he comes down, he's like a diseased John Cleese. He's like. <laughs> Jasper Carrot? Yes? Where's the rest of you? Just me. Oh, man. Where's your equipment? <laughs> and he stood up. <laughs> the blood was everywhere. <laughs> I was really concerned. Are you all right? Have you got me money? <laughs> oh, 
And when he came out, he started to panic, you know, 1,700 kids to entertain and me. And he starts running around and he gets some he gets the DJ's microphone next to you. And they oh, 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 police. And then and the, the stage at Scunthorpe Bats is only three inches high, right? It's just up there. And all the kids stand up to the front of you. The manager of the bats is panicking, he wishes, uh, boys and girls, Jack McCann's up, he's off! I bound out to this apathy, and all the... <laughs> and I started to panic, and I've got to entertain 1,700 kids for 45 minutes for 300 quid. And I started going back to all those folk club days. I used to do folk clubs, you know, and I used to know two songs. One was Wild Rover and the other one wasn't. <laughs> Gypsy Rover, that was a Gypsy Rover, and I was doing Wild Rover and Gypsy Rover and have a wild gypsy up your rover and I was, I was going down like Bobby Crush on an oil rig. <laughs> and then I remembered I knew having a gila, you know, because that's terrific. They can trap in that when it goes on for a bit, you know. <laughs> I'm into about 38 minutes and my manager goes up to see the manager of the bats for the money, right? And he's counting out his 300 quid in one pound note. I'm into having a gila for about the 23rd time, he's slowing down a bit. He finally puts the last pound note on the pile, my manager snatches it up and he runs down the stairs and he runs into this auditorium and he stands at the back of these 1,700 kids going, Carrot! Carrot! I've got the plague in money! That's all I was going to say again, good night! I just thought I'd tell you that. You know? <laughs>